Penguin Pete, Ahoy! Written and illustrated by Marcus Feister. Published in 1993 by North South Books, New York. Penguin Pete woke up one bright sunny morning and said to himself, this feels like a good day to go exploring. He plunged straight into the sea and swam quickly past all the friendly fish. Sorry, no time to play today, he said. I've got important things to do. Before long, Pete found something really interesting to explore. Around the bend in the next bay was an old ship with jagged holes and its rotten timbers and tattered sails flapping in the wind. There seemed to be no one on the ship, so Pete clambered on board. What a mess, gasped Pete, looking at all the crates, barrels, ropes, and broken planks scattered across the deck. A sudden rustling noise startled him. It seemed to come from under an old sack. Pete waddled quietly over to the sack and pulled it into the air. Towering underneath was a little gray mouse. Hello, said Pete. I'm sorry if I frightened you, but I was a bit scared myself. I didn't think there was anyone on the ship. There's only me, said the tiny little creature. And I wasn't really frightened. The mouse stood up straight and saluted smartly. I'm Horatio, the ship's mouse, he announced. Welcome aboard. Ooh, nice to meet you, Horatio. I'm Penguin Pete. Let's be friends. All right, said Horatio. Come on, I'll show you my ship. Pete liked the storeroom best of all. Some of the boxes and packages were broke open, and Pete had never seen so many good things to eat. Does all of this really belong to you? asked Pete, licking his beak. It certainly does, said Horatio with pride. Help yourself. Let's go back on deck, said Pete when he was too full to eat any more. Pete rushed upstairs and found a fishing net to play with. He swished it through the air, used it to give his friend a ride, even dressed up in it, until suddenly he was tangled in the mesh. The more he struggled to get free, the more entangled he became. Don't worry said Horatio. A ship's mouse can handle nets. I'll get you out of there. Next, Horatio suggested a game of hide and seek. Pete tried his best, but he wasn't very good at hiding. And the mouse, who knew every nook and cranny on the ship, quickly found him every time. Let's climb to the top of the mast, said the mouse. You can see the whole world from up there. He scampered nimbly up the rope ladder. Pete suggested to follow him. The view from here is wonderful, isn't it? Said Horatio. Yes, yeah, said Pete, but I don't like being so high up. I am feeling dizzy. Oh, you're just seasick, said Horatio wisely. I think I'd feel better in the sea, said Pete. Why don't we go for a swim? Swim, said the little mouse nervously. I have a better idea. I'll ride in the lifeboat. It looks seaworthy. You can push me. Pete carefully lowered the boat into the water and began to push. But Horatio squeaked, Help! My feet are getting wet. Water was running in through a hole in the bottom of the boat. Abandon ship, called Pete. But I can't swim cried the little mouse. I'll save you, shouted Pete as he raced to pull Horatio out before the boat sank. Climb on my back, said Pete. You'll be all right. He carried his little friend back to the ship and wrapped him in a blanket. The mouse was still trembling with fright. I think I'll stay on the ship from now on, he said, but I hope you'll come visit me again. Of course I will, said Pete, as he jumped into the sea. Horatio scurried to the ship's rail to wave goodbye. Ahoy thee, Pete, he called. So long, shipmate, 
cried Pete as he paddled away. The next time I come visit, I'll teach you how to swim.